the Springfield Armory XDS in 9mm. Let's check it out. Springfield Armory has played a huge part in American history. Starting out in 1777 all the way to 1968, it was the go-to source for the U.S. military. Uh, actually started by George Washington uh, because of the three rivers that run right through Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, in 1968, the doors were closed and it is now currently a national museum. But Robert Reese, uh, who is the now owner of Springfield Armory, uh, began to produce civilian versions of the M14, the M1A, and also 1911s, and have been producing those for uh, since that time. Um, of course, now they have brought in the XD series, which XD, XDM, and the XDS, which we're looking at today. Uh, these are made in Croatia, uh, and they're licensed by Springfield Armory, brought into the U.S., and this has been an excellent pistol. Uh, one of the top good, solid-based 9mm pistols, 40-45, uh, for the civilian market. Now, first thing we're going to do is make sure the gun isn't loaded, remove the magazine, check the chamber, and it's empty. Um, now, single-stack 9mm have become extremely popular for concealed carry. Uh, they're very easy to carry because they're so thin. Uh, because of the single-stack nature of the magazine, it's not so wide in the grip. And so it makes it really comfortable to carry. Uh, this is in 9mm in 40 caliber and 45 ACP. Now, what's really cool about it is all those sizes are the same. Uh, and there's no dimensional differences with the frame or the slide, which for the 45, that really makes it a very small pistol. It does come with the uh, 3 and a third inch barrel, which this is the XDS 3.3. Uh, it's 7 in 1 in the magazine, and as we've seen, it is a stainless steel magazine. But it also comes with an 8 round magazine uh, with this extended piece of grip uh, that actually mates with the frame. So here we have a solid piece, uh, especially for rain shooting, this gives you a little more of an extra uh, gripping surface right here. But um, this is a really nice stainless steel magazines. Of course, you know, this gives you another option, especially when carrying single stack, the more rounds the better. It does come with two different back strap options, and then you have a plate to be able to replace this to fit that back strap. So Springfield Armory has always been good at kind of with the accessories, and but that's not where it stops. Now this particular XDS is in the tactical gray color frame. Uh, it does come in an FDE polymer frame and also in the black. Um, and also this is a stainless steel slide, so it, it has a metal knight finish, but they do make a model where it comes in just the raw stainless steel. It has the ambidextrous mag release here and on the other side. Um, of course, you have your slide stop here and your takedown lever here. Uh, and they're very minimal. And that's one of the things I really like about a concealed carry pistol is having a really flat side. Uh, because it just adds to the thinness of the pistol. Uh, you'll notice these uh, divots right here that really allow you to get that thumb close in. Now it has the trigger safety here. And then you have a grip safety here. And that's really kind of unique for you know current modern firearms. Uh, most of your 1911s obviously have the grip safety. But this does give you just a little bit of an added safety to it. And guys, to be honest, you barely have to touch it to depress it to get it to disengage the safety. So it's not one of those things where if you don't get it just solid, uh, it's not going to fire. It's there and that's part of the design. But honestly, I don't really notice it myself. It does have an accessory rail with one slot, uh, which is pretty good for, you know, subcompact concealed carry options. Now the slide serrations are very deep, as you can see, 
very easy to grab, uh, no front serrations, and then one of the things too that I really like about this pistol are the sights. Now you have two dots at the rear on a black background, and then we have a fiber optic sight at the front. And this is really easy to pick up. Uh, in fact, I really like these sights. Um, you know, I like night sights on a lot of my pistols, but to be honest with you, just shooting this at the range, it was so easy to get on target. The grip has been textured very well. Uh, it's one of the downsides to me on a lot of the single stack pistols is it's very slick almost. Uh, there's texturing, but it's not really that aggressive. And that's one of the things you're going to see with this. It has a really aggressive texturing all along the front strap and, of course, with the removable back strap. Now, one of the advantages that I really like about the XDS is how thin it is. Uh, I mean, it is super thin. It's actually .92 inches in width. So you're going to be able to carry this really comfortably. Um, as far as the length is six and a quarter inches and the height is four and a quarter. So it's a very small package. Now here we have one of the XDS's in 45 ACP. Uh, and honestly guys, there is no discernible difference in the dimensions of this pistol. I mean, they are almost identical. But of course, looking down the business end of the pistol, you can see where the 45 is much larger. Uh, but the 9mm has a thicker barrel. And because of the thicker barrel, this weighs 22 and a half ounces while the 45 weighs 21 and a half ounces. So it's actually an ounce lighter for the 45 ACP. But the biggest difference between these two pistols is felt recoil. Uh, with 45 ACP, which you have a 230 grain bullet coming out uh, compared to a 115 grain, there is a considerable amount of recoil with the 45 ACP compared to the 9. But the 45 ACP is still very manageable. And that's one of the things about the 9mm. It is a real pleasure to shoot, even though it is a fairly small pistol. But the 45, it has the power. Now, one of the things about 45 is that it only holds five rounds in the standard magazine. And you can get, of course, the extended base plate holding six in the magazine. And this is in the FDE frame. And with that being said, I have two of the biggest competitors on the concealed carry single stack market. Uh, we have the Shield, Smith & Wesson Shield, and we have the Glock 43. Uh, both are really highly uh, comparable to the XDS. Uh, really, with the XDS holding 7-1, and 6-1 uh, on the Glock, 7-1 and one with the Smith, but there are a lot of differences. One of the big things, though, and again with the grip, the grip has so much more texturing, I don't really feel like you need talon grips or any kind of upgrade with this. I mean, you can do it, and it would be nice, but uh, with the Glock, you pretty much need to have the talon grips because it's fairly slick, and then on the Smith & Wesson, you, to me, you definitely need it. Uh, the texturing here is very light, uh, and it just needs a little more to me. Uh, in fact, my wife's concealed carry is a Smith & Wesson shield, and she has talon grips on it. Um, so that is one of the big advantages of the uh, XDS is the grip is already just excellent. But now one of the things I definitely want to, to point out here is that all three of these guns are very comparable in quality and reliability. There's just no doubt. They're all proven, and a lot of guys are going to have different preferences more than anything else. But, you know, this is, the grip angle is a little more like a 1911 on the XDS, whereas, of course, your Glock is more Glock-like. The Smith has more of a straight shooter right here with the grip, the back grip. Uh, but there are a lot of people that love the, the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield. There are a lot of guys that love the Glock 43. And it's one of those things that you need just to get it in your hand and check it out. But one of the big differences is price. Uh, your Smith & Wesson Shield, they, they can run anywhere from about, you know, 320 to 350 according to where you're finding them. Uh, of course, the XDS runs about the $400 to $420 range. And then you have your Glock 43, which runs up into the $450. So uh, you've got from lowest to highest right here as far as price. Now we want to check the trigger and of course we're going to go ahead and double check to make sure the gun isn't loaded. Uh, there is no magazine disconnect in here but I'm going to go ahead and insert the magazine. Uh, you have your tab here and then you pull it and then it hits a pretty good wall and then you push through the wall and then it has a fairly decent snap. I, I wouldn't say that this is one of the best triggers uh, that I've ever had but it's really um, just a typical polymer trigger. So you have that wall, you have a little bit of stacking, and then you have a click. 
reset right about there and it's tactile and it's audible now we're going to check trigger pull weight with the lineman trigger gauge you got to engage the grip safety to check it seven pounds 13 ounces seven pounds eight ounces that was what i was typically getting by the way seven pounds 5.5 .5 ounces uh, i was actually i had done this a number of times before the review and i was getting about seven and a half pounds of trigger pull but at the range you just really don't notice and for a concealed carry self-defense option i really would like to go for a little heavier trigger pull i think this is a little heavier than i i like but honestly it's not that bad it's easy to get follow-up shots we're going to insert a dummy round and we're going to check for the uh, loaded chamber indicator. And right here at the top, it kind of bows up and uh, lets you know that you can feel that. And then, of course, visually you can see it as well. Pull the round out and it's flat. So it's pretty non obtrusive, which I like. I want to thank Freedom Munitions for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, sending the 115 grain new manufactured stuff. This is really good. I've shot well over 2,000 rounds of this. Uh, they've also sent me the Pro, and this is their 124 grain XAP match. And uh, this is uh, a hollow point, and we're going to check it out as well. I got down here and forgot my target, so I just used this stand. I put a white dot right in the middle, 10 yards, um, seven shots, just right in here. Now we're going to try it with the Pro Match 124 grain and just see if we can get even better accuracy. But I am going to be standing freehand shooting, so not on the rest. Now this group, honestly, I was all eight rounds, which I shot eight here. Uh, it was one just solid hole right there. Uh, and then the last one I pulled, of course. You could feel the difference with the pistol. The recoil was a little more because of the 124, but it was very solid. So uh, very pleased with that group, except for the bottom one. <laughs> now one thing I wanna really emphasize about shooting this pistol is the sights are excellent. Uh, the fiber optic on the front is so easy to find and the sights, the two dots in the back, it just lines up naturally. I really enjoyed shooting the pistol. I didn't know how I would enjoy it because it is so thin and because it's so small. This is the first time I've ever shot an XDS. And um, I'll tell you guys, uh, for a concealed carry option, I think this is top notch. Uh, now, there's only seven rounds, and of course, with the extension, you've got eight carrying an extra magazine, uh, but the size really makes this very convenient. Um, it's so thin, it's going to be easy to carry every day. Now the texturing on the grip really allows you to get a firm hold on the pistol. Um, you, you feel like you've really got a good grip on it and you know it gives you a lot of confidence. Uh, if you have a gun that feels like it's coming out of your hand, you're too busy concentrating on the sights. Uh, but with the firm grip that you can get on this pistol plus the exceptional sights, um, I think that's really a great combination. The recoil was very mild uh, for this size pistol and um, I was able to get really on target quickly and hit that steel over and over. Now shooting one-handed, which typically in a self-defense situation is probably what you're going to do and you're going to be point shooting. And the grip really comes in handy uh, as I was shooting the, the rubber dummy. I think the three things that this gun really has going for it are the sights, the grip, and just the thinness of this pistol. It's going to make it a really great gun to carry on an everyday basis. Now, as far as reliability, it fit the full metal jackets, of course, with no problem. Even the Pro Match uh, jacketed hollow points, no problem at all. Um, it just, not even a bobble. Uh, we did shoot it some yesterday at the range um, that we were doing, just some shooting. I didn't get any video of that. 
so this pistol is not brand new. It has been shot some, uh, but typically I like to take them right out of the box and shoot them. Now the 45 ACP, which I pulled out, uh, just to kind of feel the difference in recoil, there was definitely a significant amount of increased recoil with the 45 ACP. But again, the grip, the sights, it just helped to align it. Uh, as far as pleasure for shooting or for smaller hands or less experienced shooters, I think the 9mm would definitely be the way to go over the 40 and the 45. Uh, but you get a lot more power with the 45 and of course with less round count. So, you know, you have to weigh out all these options. And I think really for the 9mm, getting eight rounds in, a, in the extended magazine is a huge plus, and even seven in the standard mag. The slide stop is very minimal, which I definitely like. Bring it back, you can lock it into place. Now, magazine's out, the gun is unloaded. We're gonna go ahead and disassemble the pistol. Right here is your takedown lever. You go in the up position and then release your slide and you need to pull the trigger. And then you can just go ahead and relieve your slide. We have captive dual uh, recoil spring with guide rod and this is steel guide rod. Barrel, of course, is typical Browning modified design. Uh, and as you look in here, you can see that it's very heavily inspired by the original Glock polymer design. But one thing I want to point out is the slide rails are thick. I mean, they are really solid in front and rear. And that's all you need to do to field strip the handgun. Uh, reverse order to reassemble. Drop in your barrel, your guide rod. And you're good to go. One thing that I do want to talk about though is they had a recall a couple of years ago on these pistols. Um, one of the problems was that if you weren't gripping the uh, grip safety and you cocked the slide back that it wouldn't reset the trigger and that the firing pin would be in the forward position which could cause a uh, accidental discharge or negligent discharge. Uh, they fix that and one of the ways that you can tell that is if there's a roll pin right here this is a fixed model so if it doesn't have that roll pin in there you'll probably want to stay away from the pistol because it wasn't sent back under recall now is it possible I mean under normal use to not uh, engage the, the grip safety when you're pulling back your slide and not typically but really that could be a problem if for some reason this doesn't happen and honestly guys if it can go wrong it will go wrong so if you have a pistol that hasn't been sent back for the recall, I would definitely recommend doing it. But as far as this gun goes, we had zero malfunctions, period. This gun just ran like a top. XDS 9 on the slide, 3.3. Uh, one thing I want to note is they do make a 4-inch version as well, which will be, of course, the 4.0. XDS on the grip, right here, Springfield Armory, USA. As far as the box goes, this has to be one of the best boxes on the market for a gun manufacturer. It is a solid box with lockdowns and a little handle. Uh, this is really, it's just a real quality box. Inside we have closed foam padding and we have um, a magazine here. Magazine, of course you have your uh, magazine extension and you have your back strap. Of course all the information is in the top. You have your typical lock, we have some fiber optic rods, extra ones, and then a cleaning brush. Now as I stated a little bit earlier, you can find these for around the $400 to $450 range, just according to what you're looking for, where you are. Uh, also, there are, it's a little more expensive to get the night sights. Uh, it does come with two magazines, again, and uh, you get your 7-rounder and your 8-rounder with the extended base pad. If you want extra magazines, one of the best sources that I know of is GunMagWarehouse.com. I think the standard magazines are running $23.99 and the extended are $31.99. Now as far as pros and cons of the pistol, uh, I'm going to go with the pros first because really this gun honestly is a pleasure to shoot. The recoil is mild on it. I think this would be great for female shooters uh, that don't have a lot of experience or guys that don't have a lot of experience. Uh, it's just a very easy gun to get back on target. Uh, the grip is just a little bit longer than your Glock grip, which gives you enough to where I can get my pinky around the bottom. Now, I have medium-sized hands. If you have larger hands, you'll definitely need this extension. 
uh, but for concealed carry I think this really is the perfect size. The sights are awesome. Um, I just really like the sights. Uh, I would think about changing these to night sights, but I like them so much I think I'm going to leave them just like they are. Uh, with the ambidextrous features, that's also nice. Uh, the ease of breaking down, the thinness of the slide and the pistol altogether. It's less than an inch thick, uh, 0.92 inches, and so that's really nice. Of course, the accessory rail gives an advantage over a lot of the concealed carry options out there, single stack. Magazines are fairly cheap, and the price on this gun is is really good. I mean, four to 450, that's a, a great price for a very well quality made pistol that's been around for a number of years now. And it really gets those top tier pistols with the single stack magazine. As far as cons go, trigger, uh, you know, it's a little heavy, uh, but really you don't notice it out at the range. Uh, the grip safety uh, is, some people just don't like it, some people do. I really don't care one way or the other. I'm going to grip the pistol before I shoot it anyway. So uh, that to me is not really a deal breaker. Uh, but anything else that's really I don't like about the pistol, there's nothing I don't like about it. It's just a really good solid choice. Uh, so if you're looking for a good single stack for concealed carry, I think this would be an excellent gun. Uh, one of the things I want to recommend is Nothing Fancy did a full review on this and he was shooting still at 60 yards. <laughs> so the accuracy is there, and uh, that's really the, what you really want, especially for a small pistol like this. Now I want to thank my buddy Josh Spence down at Drake Firearms, and I'll have all the information down below. I really appreciate him letting me borrow this gun for the review. Uh, I was already working on one of the XDS 45s, and when he came up with this, I was like, that's a great way to do a good comparison between the two. And also coming up is the XDS 45 review, which we'll be doing in the next week or so. So far, this has been a lot of fun as well. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Then, well, and what's really kind of cool about that is the 9mm. Now the texturing on the grip really helps you get a good grip. And we have, of course, your typical piece of grass. Oh. Ah.